On CB Sciences TV at youtube.com, we have uploaded all sorts of lectures involving the science behind the endocannabinoid system, CBD, hemp, the immune system, and biochemistry and biology in general. This is because we feel it is important to combine all of this information into one place where we can access it and understand what is going on behind taking a hemp-derived CBD product. Today, I wish to summarize for you some of my favorite lectures on the subject of the endocannabinoid system so that we can all be on the same page. My name is Miles Cyril, and this is a special edition of Minute with Miles. So in understanding the endocannabinoid system, don't take it from me. We're going to listen together to some of the researchers intimately involved with figuring out the ins and outs of the endocannabinoid system. In 1998, it was Dr. Vincenzo De Marzo that had written that it is our endocannabinoid system that is responsible for signals in our brain that have to do with relaxation, eating, sleeping, protection of the brain, all sorts of numerous physiological functions. And he has more to say about the system, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of uh, uh, fight or flight system uh, that uh, maybe has been evolutionarily conserved uh, to combat the consequences of stress and uh, to recover from stress more, more quickly, as quickly as possible. So I would still say that that concept is valid, even though it's not so simple as it may have looked in 1998. In other words, this system appears to be fundamental for how our bodies adapt to stress in the outside world. And when I say stress, I'm not just talking about emotional stress. I'm talking about physical stress, oxidative stress, environmental stress. And again, consider that every creature with a backbone has an endocannabinoid system not just humans, and so this really speaks to the fact that numerous organisms are able to adapt to the environment via these cannabinoid receptors that are present all throughout our body and the ligands that we produce to regulate those receptors, and potentially the phytocannabinoids from cannabis that can modulate the system too. Um, so of course the name endocannabinoid originates from the fact that there are exocannabinoids, such as the um, active ingredient of cannabis, tetrahydrocannabinol or THC. Um, THC enters the, the body and, and eventually the human brain and, and produces most of its neurobehavioral effects through a, a single G-protein coupled receptor, or cannabinoid receptor 1. There is a second cannabinoid receptor, cannabinoid receptor 2, which is also expressed in discrete regions of the brain and the immune system. But, but most of the effects that we associate with cannabis use, um, including those that are beneficial, such as in, in improvements in, in pain, uh, relief, um, appetite, um, reductions in spasticity, uh, as well as the effects that maybe untoward motor defects and cognitive impairment occur through the central CB1 um, receptor. That was Dr. Cravat of the Scripps Research Institute who basically explained that these receptors in our brain, the CB1 receptors, are primarily responsible for the euphoric effects of cannabis consumption, i.e. the stoned effect, the munchies, so on and so forth. And Dr. Piomelli of the University of California, Irvine, has more to say in regards to these receptors too. The CB1 receptor is uh, certainly uh, one that we are most interested in. Um, Dr. Mackey uh, showed us some very beautiful pictures of its localization in the brain. I would like to um, stress, however, that this receptor is truly ubiquitous in the sense that it does, it is expressed by uh, many different cell types in the body, not just by neurons, not just by astrocytes or mycoglia, but also by hepatocytes, by uh, adipocytes, and a variety of other um, cell lineages. Uh, the CB2 receptor, on the other hand, is a little bit different because uh, it is mainly expressed uh, by cells of the uh, immune uh, lineage, either innate or adaptive immunity, um, including macrophages, B lymphocytes. Uh, so, in a sense, uh, CB2 receptors also are ubiquitous insofar as macrophages are ubiquitous. But they are ubiquitous in a different way as the CB1 receptor is. Evolutionarily, it wouldn't make sense for us to have cannabinoid receptors just for plant compounds, but it took a long time for scientists to discover the endogenous 
endocannabinoids that we make in our, inside of our own bodies. Back to Dr. Kravat. So back in the, in the early 90s, uh, Rafi Mishulam's lab, um, along with others, uh, determined endogenous constituents that activate the CB1 receptor. These are essentially uh, neutral lipids that represent conjugations with arachidonic acid, either conjugations with ethanolamine to create this fatty acid amide anandamide, or conjugations with glycerol uh, to create this fatty acid ester to arachidonic glycerol. So anandamide was the first endocannabinoid to be discovered in the early 90s, and is named after the Sanskrit word ananda, which means bliss, joy, heart. Folks, this is our bliss molecule that we're talking about here. So we have cannabinoid receptors, we have the ligands, the transmitters themselves, such as anandamide or that other 2-AG that Dr. Kravat mentioned in the last slide. And a third component of the endocannabinoid system that is important are the enzymes that build up the anandamide as well as break them down. And one of these enzymes is called fatty acid amide hydrolase, FA for short. If any dysregulation of the system occurs, there might be some problems. So researchers are investigating if it's possible to block enzymes such as FA to elevate the levels of anandamide. The inhibitor of anandamide degradation prevalently target the enzyme FA, fatty acid hematohydrolase, and are effective in a number of, of uh, animal models, but especially in human cannabis abuse has been shown recently and they have a very mild side effect profile in animals and humans. So I bring up FA specifically because there's actually some research that suggests that CBD might be a FA inhibitor. However, listen to some of the scientists about what they think CBD is actually doing at the endocannabinoid system. Um, cannabidiol is the epitome of polypharmacy. It does everything, okay? Uh, which means that it does nothing or we are really wrong as to what it does. But it does do among the many things that it does. It does block an anandamide transport into cells and it does block far, but at high micromolar concentrations. I'm talking about 100, 150 micromolar is the 50s. Now this said, in the one clinical trial that I am aware of where these things have been tested, when uh, CBD was given to patients, uh, the levels, uh, this was psychotic uh, uh, individuals, uh, uh, subjects with schizophrenia, uh, the levels of um, FA substrates were measured in those patients and they were found to increase with the administration of cannabidiol and also to be positively correlated with symptom relief. So it turns out CBD does a little bit of everything in the body. It's very molecularly promiscuous and binds to a number of different targets, including the serotonin receptor, including regulating inflammatory transcription factors such as NF-kappa B. And so the capacity for CBD potentially to do a lot in the body extends to its ability to do more than just regulate that one FA enzyme that breaks down anandamide. Listen to Dr. Vincenzo DiMarzo and when I actually met him in person, he said, look, when I research CBD, it does everything. Other cannabinoids do not activate very potently the cannabinoid receptors like CB1 or CB2. They act by a more than one mechanism of action. I personally favor uh, drugs, be them natural or synthetic, that uh, activate more than one target because these, with some luck, can mean more efficacy and less side effects, contrary to what it was thought uh, until some time ago. His last sentence is such an important statement. The standard model of drug development has always been one compound for one receptor target, for one pathway, and that can only work to some extent. And I think a lot of people, a lot of uh, scientists are starting to understand the fact that complex diseases of aging have multiple targets have multiple pathways that have become aberrant or are not working properly. And so having compounds, perhaps from nature, that exert a number of different effects in the body, have so-called polypharmacological effects, really can modulate multiple different targets, maybe not so strongly, not strong enough to create side effects. And so this seems to be perhaps a little bit more of a functional or holistic way of targeting the body in a more profound manner. The research then suggests that cannabinoids such as CBD could exert these types of polypharmacological effects. 
So when Dr. Piamelli of the University of California, Irvine, is asked whether the endocannabinoid system is the regulator of all regulators, he responds, <laughs> I'll start. I might as well start. And please, you know, interject as you, as you see fit. This is a, almost a philosophical question, but I think it's a very good question, as a matter of fact, because uh, it, I personally believe that the uh, uh, endocannabinoid system is indeed a homeostatic, uh, homeostatic system, uh, homeostatic and allostatic. That is, uh, under normal circumstances, uh, in a healthy individual, the system can um, play an important role in controlling, if you're talking about 2AG, synaptic function, or if you're talking about an anamide, the response to stress. But if uh, the system becomes pathological, so for example, after prolonged exposure to, to THC, I think they can become also allostatic. So it, 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 homeostasis that is no longer adaptive, is maladaptive. And that is something that we always need to to keep in mind that something that is meant for uh, uh, is meant to regulate homeostasis can uh, play a role also in allostasis. The endocannabinoid system is neither good nor bad, and if something becomes dysregulated within the body, it's possible that this master regulatory system might start to go awry, which is why it's so important for researchers to be understanding how the plant cannabinoids, CBD and THC from cannabis, might interact with the system to bring us back to a place of true balance. Hence why it's important for us to listen to Dr. DeMarzo talk about the potential effects of having too much endocannabinoid activity. The goal is always to have not too much, not too little, just the right amount. However, this is a system that gets disrupted, like all endogenous system. Just imagine the immune system, all the problems that the immune system causes when it's disrupted. The endocannabinoid system the same. When it's disrupted, it causes problems. And one of these problems, the most famous one, is obesity. The endocannabinoid system is a, is a system that activates food intake, energy, inhibits energy expenditure, stimulates energy accumulation. If I have some uh, kilograms more uh, after Easter, and not only after Easter, it's because my endocannabinoid system has been overactivated during uh, the Easter vacation. So how do you regulate the endocannabinoid system and keep it in a healthful and balanced place? Dance. Eat probiotic food. Eat spicy food. And take hemp derived CBD products. All of the lectures that I discussed about in this video today are available for you to watch on CV Sciences TV at youtube.com under the header Behind the Science. And not just the three lectures here in this video, there's all sorts of talks that we have posted for you to stay informed and entertained in the areas of immune health, endocannabinoid health. This is just the start. There's going to be more videos like this to come. And if you prefer getting your information through books rather than through YouTube or whatnot, what I recommend for you to read includes books such as The Endocannabinoidome. This is a technical piece that was edited by Dr. Vincenzo DiMarzo. It's an excellent piece of work. Cannabis as Medicine is a great overview of the use of the whole plant and how it works in the body. Full disclosure, I wrote a chapter in this. Road to Ananda is a perfect book if you're a layperson that you don't want to get caught up in the technical jargon and really want to understand the impact of how the system is, is affecting our daily lives and where it came from and how it was discovered. And I invite you all to keep current with the literature. This is uh, the journal over here, Cannabis and Cannabinoid Research. It's a peer-reviewed journal. They are publishing every month all sorts of new research in the areas of cannabis medicine and the endocannabinoid system. This is the most cutting edge stuff that you're gonna be finding out there. So look this up. This is another wonderful resource for you. And thank you all so much for being here with me today. Be well, and I'll see you next time.